Welcome to Electra Online. The next reason why life on Earth is so miraculous is because we have tectonic plate movement. Now you may say, well, wait a minute. Tectonic plate movement does not cause tremendous earthquakes and destruction and volcanic eruptions? And the answer is yes. But those aren't all bad things, unless, of course, you live, happen to live right in a location where there's a really bad earthquake or a huge volcanic eruption. That can be quite hazardous to your health. But for the planet itself, it's a cooling mechanism, and without it, things would be quite different. By studying Venus, we began to realize why tectonic plate movement was so important, because we believe that on Venus, there probably isn't any tectonic plate movement, which means that the crust is so thick that we don't have the various pieces of the crust that move relative to one another. If we take a look at the Earth map here, where you see all the different colors on this map here, each of those regions is a separate region of the crust that moves independent of all the other regions. In some cases, they're moving apart from each other. Some cases, they move towards each other. They grind along one another, one going up, the other one going down. Or in some cases, one will actually go underneath the other one and because of that, that's called subduction, and because of that, the other plate gets lifted up, and that's part of the reason, for example, where we have the Himalaya mountains over here, because the plate on which India sits is actually burying and burying itself underneath the Asian plate, causing the Asian plate to be uplifted, causing the huge mountain regions to form, and slowly India will then be disappearing into the earth. Of course, if you live in India, don't worry, this is an extremely slow, slow process with only a few centimeters per year, so you don't have to worry that this is going to happen anytime soon. This is, of course, takes millions and millions of years. For example, here along the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it used to be that 200 million years ago, South America was butted up against Africa, North America was butted up against Europe, and this is one giant continent, and now they're moving apart at a rate of about one inch per century or something like that. So you can see that Again, this is a very slow process and it takes many, many millions of years to change the appearance of the Earth and the appearance of the continents over time. What is also really interesting is the continent of Antarctica used to be in a very different position. How do we know that? Because we have found fossilized evidence of trees and fossilized evidence of, of dinosaurs on the continent of Antarctica, which of course today is impossible. Trees cannot survive and dinosaurs could not survive on the continent because it has now moved right where the south pole of the earth is and it's of course way too cold there but several hundred million years ago it was in a very different location where life was very possible so you can see that life will change over time depending upon where these continents will move to but again to the cooling mechanism because what we've discovered on Venus is that because it doesn't have the tectonic plate movement and therefore it doesn't have the release of all that build up heat inside the planet. The reason why planets like Earth and Venus build all that heat is because there's a lot of, ra a lot of radioactive material deep inside the planet. And that, of course, decays and generates an enormous amount of heat and the heat just builds up and builds up and builds up and if there's no cracks in the crust where heat can escape via volcanic eruptions, and of course on the Earth we have lots and lots of volcanic eruptions, then the heat can't go anywhere, it just builds up, and at some point the whole planet just basically cracks open like an egg, and vast quantities of lava will flow over vast regions of the planet. Like on Venus, we have volcanic flows that look like they've covered half the planet. And of course, that kind of event would just simply wipe out all life on Earth on a regular basis. We think on Venus it happens every several hundred million years. So you can imagine if that were to happen on the Earth, life each time would get completely wiped out and it would be very difficult for life to come back and repopulate the world and it would get wiped out again. But because this gradually cooling technique by all the volcanic eruptions, the heat doesn't build up and so that therefore the Earth will not do what Venus does. And that's why Earth is a much nicer place to live than Venus. Well, actually for a lot of other reasons as well. Again, it's the right place, the right atmosphere, and all those various things, lots of water, lots of oceans that Venus doesn't have. But tectonic plate movement is one of those things that on the surface looks like a very bad thing to have, but in actuality, it's a very good thing to have because somehow you have to get rid of that heat build up inside the Earth and tectonic plate, plate movement is one of those ways in which that happens. Again, therefore, we are here 
on this incredible planet with all these things that we need for life to survive. No people on Venus. No people on Venus, never have been and never will be. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have to worry about tectonic plate movement on Venus. They have much, they have much bigger problems on Venus. <laughs> people. No, I, we will never go visit Venus with people. It's just simply too hot. I saw a great science fiction movie where they actually did walk on the surface. <laughs>